Hey, y'all, this is Cornelius Lindsay. Thank you so much for being a part of, of my YouTube family. You know, I'm starting to get back into the hang of this thing. Y'all know how it is, man. Life kind of just grabs you. You know what that's like? Life just kind of gets you and you're kind of going through, you're kind of doing different things and you just get so flustered, get so frustrated and you're like, man, I just, I've kind of forgotten about everybody. And this is one of the things that I forgot about, but I'm back and I'm here and I want to make sure that I remain consistent. And just being able to share with you, sharing some very practical things and also just sharing some real things about my life. I, I, want, I want to kind of talk to you because people always ask me and people always have the questions and sometimes they, I don't think they're too, they're too afraid to ask or people make assumptions, but they want to know like, well, how do you and your wife, how do you make your money? Because usually people assume that as a preacher, you just got to be stealing from the church, which is so far from the truth. You know, my, my wife and I, before we got started into ministry, this was back... I, I started full-time ministry back in 2010. When we got, when my wife and I, we started, we started talking in 2000, uh, 2000 and 2009. We got married in 2010. But one of the things that, that we, we started talking about was being able to, to, to make passive income. That was very important to us. And one of the things that we, we made sure that we wanted to know, we wanted to make sure that we were never in a position where we had to be a crutch for the church. That, we, that if we were going to make something, that the church would never be, the ch church would never be at a place where you know, they just have to just fully supply everything that we need. Now, we, all, we believe we believe what scripture believes that the church should be able to the church should be able to help help the preacher help those who, who labor inside of the church reason why we have employees who are who are paid by the church but, but my wife and I we always wanted to be entrepreneurial that's something that we push it may not be something that you always hear about it's not something that people always know about but we always wanted to be entrepreneurial so that's something that we started doing you know back in 2012 before before we ever started the church my wife started an organization called Pinky Promise where she was selling bracelets. And there was just little bracelets, kind of like, what would Jesus do bracelets? And those bracelets, I mean, she sold those bracelets for, you know, for some dollars, I forgot how much it cost, but she was on back order. She had thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of those bracelets. But for us, we knew that that was just an active form of income because active form of income means that you actually have to make it or you got to supply it. You got to build it. You got to be there in order for it to happen. You know, we go on speaking engagements and people may give us an honorarium. Like people actually assume that we go places that we have a speaking fee and I don't you know my wife that's so far from the truth when you see when you see our information we we send it out to people and we let people know this is this is if you would like to give an honorarium this is how much you can give what's your budget like if you would like to my wife and I we've traveled we preached at places and we didn't get a dime we didn't get a dime in return or maybe we went and we preached at a place and then the place said that they would pay us and they still haven't they still haven't reimbursed us we don't go back to them and say I can't believe you didn't do this I'm gonna sue you because that wasn't the, that that's not the intent of why we went into ministry. That's not the intent of why we of why we love God. That's not the intent of why we do what we do. But you know, we started we started a boutique. Uh, we we started doing things on on uh, on on Amazon with drop shipping. And my, my wife and I we own our own book publishing company. A lot of people don't know that. But we actually publish people's books. It's called Lynn Cross Publishing. We actually publish people's books. We publish children's books. We publish cookbooks. We all of my books are published on there. We have a book publishing company. I have 13 books. God, I, mean, I have 13 books. A couple of those books are on are on uh, are on are on, uh, are on uh, uh, audio or, or Audible. My wife has books are on auto on 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 uh, on on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Audible. You know, my wife has nine books. So between 13 and nine books. I mean, if you get you get people every day who are buying books I mean that 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 make that can make some you know lucrative money but you have we have books we have we have we have mentoring programs we have other things that we do outside of everything else real estate I mean you know when we when we look at our life we wanted to be able to have multiple streams you know I don't care how, how religious you try to be how spiritual you try to be you know we we read something years ago that said the average millionaire has at least seven streams of income because this is what we believe we believe that if one stream is cut off, then I got six more, I have six more that can supply me. So just in case, I need to have that six more to kind of kind of kind of keep me up so I can keep building on that one that was stopped up. But over the years, my wife and I, we've been able to set up about 11 different streams. And some of those streams do a little bit better than others, but we, we, we work with what we got. But we just wanted to continue to be entrepreneurial. We've never been in a position where we've had to just go to somebody and we never wanted to be in that position, have to go to people and say, we need to get this. There's never been a time in the history of my church that I've, I've ever went to the church and said, you know, 
know what? Uh, I need everybody to give to give big big money right now in order for you to do this. Never been a time. In fact, I've had people who've come to our church and complain in the very beginning because they said you didn't even talk about offering. You didn't talk about giving to the church. While our church needs the money because we have bills to pay and we have family support, now we have employees. I've never been a beggar. And my wife and I, we never wanted to put anybody around us in that position to just kind of have to give, 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 and never see anything in return. In fact, even with our, with our church, I tell our, our, our congregation all the time, if they only knew what we did for our benevolence to help people who need groceries, to help people outside of our church who need groceries, who, who, whose car quit, single mom, she got put out of her apartment and we got our new apartment, people who found themselves in jail and sitting at, sitting at we, 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 I, I've sat at jail precincts for, for eight, nine, 10 hours just to book people out of jail. You know, when we started years ago, we wanted to be a blessing to people. And this may be very difficult for some people to believe because ultimately maybe you've had a bad decision. But can I, can I say this? Not everybody is entitled to your bad opinion. Just because something or something you read or something you heard may have happened with, with some people doesn't mean that everybody is liable for that. So I just say this, you know, over the years, we've been able to start some very lucrative and legal businesses that have allowed for us to be able to do what we love. And then we're also very, very wise. Like I know the, the credit card gurus out there say cut up all your credit cards, but we take our we take our MX our our uh, our, uh, our uh, MX cards. We pay things on those cards, and when we do, hey, we get points from them. So at the end of the year, we can take we can take a first class trip to Hawaii, and we use points for it. We go to our hotel, and we use points for it. Or we are able to use the points. We're able to buy things it because it translates over to points. The, the, the point is this: we have learned to be to be very creative what we needed to do and what and, and what and what we and how we're going to earn our money so that we can know what we're doing and, and not just to just use the books not just to use other things not just use speaking engagement not to use all, all that other kind of stuff but we've learned to also do things that are outside of the church maybe you don't realize it but just because just because you're a preacher doesn't mean that you have to just be stuck to just the pulpit We've learned to be savvy outside of the church so that we can also be good business, a good businessman, good businesswoman outside of the church. So just in case the whole church says that you don't like us anymore, that it won't ruin our life, that we can still be able to give the scholarships. We can still be able to take care of our three kids. We can still be able to help everybody else and do what needs to be done. But I'm telling you this, over the years, it, it, it has been a great experience, a great journey of us being able to, to, to find different things, to be entrepreneurial, to be able to help different people. But over the years, I mean, starting a publishing company that has done that has done really, really well. So starting, I mean, 13 books, nine books from real estate to to uh, to uh, uh, I mean, you you to, for Amazon drop shipping and for many other things that we do. You know, it's, it's been it's been an amazing ride. But we we set out over the years to set up those different streams to be able to feed one big pot that ultimately can be able to feed those people who are around us. If only you had an opportunity to see how we really live and you actually get a chance to see that. My wife and I are starting something that we call the Lindsay TV. The, the Lindsay TV is an opportunity for you to get a bird's eye view into our life, into our world, where you get a chance to see how we live and you might be stunned when you see it. You might be stunned to see exactly what we how we live in our house what we do in our house and hopefully it'll encourage you to possibly be able to imitate some of those things in yours we're all about helping families helping marriages helping men helping women to be able to not only do more but to know more and to do it in a healthy way so I want to be able to share with you Lindsay TV there's a there's a place right here on the screen that you can get all the information that you need and furthermore I also talk a lot more about my businesses and about strategy and some that I call strategy school, which is also another way that a very lucrative way that I, we, we've been able we've been able to amass income. But strategy school is another way. There's a way where you can be able to join to become a student. So I can be able to teach you some of the things that I've learned so that you don't, you know, you people around you, they don't have to be jealous or envious or upset or angry about how we do what we do. Instead, you can just be like, you know, what, let me learn it so I can do it too. I can mimic it in my own house. I can imitate it in my own home. Have strategy school. You can get more information about that. For men, especially, I'm doing something called S squared leadership retreat. It's something that you, I'm, 
men, you need to know, you need to be there. I'm only taking about 12 to 15 guys. We're sitting down, we're talking about your life, but we're talking about strategy. I want to show you how you can be more entrepreneurial. And maybe you just say, I want to be at my job and you just want to perfect where you are. Let's do that. Everybody doesn't have to be an entrepreneur and that's okay. But I want to help you to be the best leader you can possibly be doing exactly what God has called you to do. So S squared leadership retreat is something that is great for you. You can get more information down here below. You have a link right here. You can click then not only that but last but not least you can join with you can you can join with us in, in in everything that we're doing we got Lindsay TV we got we got strategy school we got we got we got the S squared retreat these are these are ways that that I want to be able to help you. I also have a mentorship program. Now, the mentorship program is only for men, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for me to be able to converse with them individually, to talk them through their life. Because I believe that men, that they need to have a mission statement. I believe you need a vision statement. I also believe you need values. These are things you need for not just your business, but you need for your house. I look at my marriage as, a, as, as an organism with organization. And if it's going to be, if we're going to be organized inside of this organism, then we need to make sure we have good strategy and good strategy means that I need to have a vision statement. Where are we going? The mission statement tells me how I'm going to get there. The values tells me what I will tolerate and what I will not tolerate. These are things that are important. So if one of those things, if the, one of those things speaks to you, make sure you become a part of it, either mentorship for the men, S square leadership retreat for the men, or if you say strategy school, which is for me, which is, which is both for men and women, make sure you join with a strategy school. Or, or, or make sure that you that you just you become part of Lindsay TV. It's something you can get a bird's eye view into our life. Also share some stuff with our friends. It'd be a great way for us to connect and stay connected. Hey, God loves you. God bless you. I do too. And always remember that nations are waiting on your obedience. Nations are waiting for you. God bless you.